everyone. Thank you, Mr. German. Thank you for the, the, for the organization. Uh, I'm delighted to be here today and to have uh, this opportunity. Uh, I'm Evangelos Gigis from uh, Diablos Group, and I will deliver a short presentation about the next milestone in uh, remote inspection techniques. What should wait for? So, it goes without saying that uh, surveys are uh, one of the main functions for the industry. Everyone, IMO, other uh, administrative bodies, IAX have their rules, uh, regulation, all well established. Everyone works for this and everyone interesting to have uh, a good survey in order to uh, have a safety uh, for the seafarers and the ship as well. If we have a glance at one of uh, one of the most important publication of Ajax, it is uh, the one uh, for surveying certification. It comprises of uh, uh, 29 uh, uh, Z1 to Z29 uh, regulation. And if you try to find the word close up with the PDF tool, then we have a matches of uh, 464 um, findings of the word. So, actually, the close-up survey is the holy grail of uh, the surveys. Everything starts from close-up and ends to close-up. And what is close-up? The close-up is the survey where the structural components of the ship, of the, of, uh, the offshore uh, structure, are within uh, the visual uh, inspection range of the surveyor, normally reach of hand. And what we want to see? the first findings in order to continue or not to other kind of surveys. So, coating, uh, bulking, other uh, structural deformation. Traditionally, the close-up survey are performed with scaffolding. We need to build staging with um, cherry pickers, with uh, ladders and rafting. Occasionally, because most of the world now rafting is not permitted, but still there's some uh, kind of uh, this survey. Um, the alternative means of uh, surveys are the remote inspection surveys. Recently, since 2019, the IAX has regulated the surveys with a lot of regulation. The main uh, means that we use at the moment are the robotics. And uh, these robotics mainly consist of uh, drones or robotics arms recently, ROVs, of course, and somehow the climbers uh, are within this kind of, uh, of survey, though it's not a kind of robotics. What kind of surveys the remote inspection can be applied? almost in all kinds of surveys, either for classification or for preliminary condition, let's say for pre-docking preparation, very critical. We have a drone inside, so we do know what exactly we should uh, look into in, in the course of uh, a docking uh, in an effective way. Of course, of course, when we have known damages, we can assess the progress uh, and to go uh, forth. Last, we can also use it for uh, short notice events. Let's say if we have a damage assessment or a grounding or something like this. The benefits, the benefits is obvious. Uh, having having uh, follow the traditional methods of close up, we need either to work at height or to enter confined space. Both uh, impose a lot of uh, dangers. Uh, instead, we can uh, send a robot to do this job. Uh, second, efficiency. We can have a thorough inspection, even to very hard to reach uh, spaces, sending uh, the robot to do this job. And last, the precision. We do have a lot of data for difficult to, 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 to reach areas that with other means, it's almost impossible uh, or even very difficult uh, to, to deal with. And uh, at the same time, we have a lot of information derived from uh, either um, high-resolution cameras or 
other uh, means that we are going to see on the next page, slide. So speaking for the means that the robotics has uh, embedded, uh, well known as uh, payloads that consist of uh, high resolution cameras at the moment. And recently we have a huge development and uh, there are robots that are using LiDAR. LiDAR is a, a, a very important tool that um, until this year was uh, used with a traditional method, a tripod inside a ship or a machinery or a shore, but now it is embedded on, on a drone. With uh, the LiDAR, we can have point cloud that help us in in the next, in the next, uh, to explain the next uh, slide, that uh, about the milestones uh, the, of the remote inspection. The remote inspection being uh, an ingredient part of uh, of the shipping industry actually follows the digital transformation of uh, the industry as a whole. Uh, regarding the remote inspection, the three uh, ingredients of the transformation consist of visualization, artificial intelligence as presented before, and uh, at the end of the day, what we are looking, of course, it will be a long run uh, goal. It's the functional autonomy in, in the inspection. Speaking for visualization, I would say that 2023 is the year of visualization for remote inspection techniques. Having this new tool of uh, the LiDAR, the inspector can have a drone inside the confined space or uh, at height, and at the same time has a 3D, uh, real-time 3D map combined with uh, a camera with visual findings. At the same time, we can feed this uh, data back to the office, of course, it's not so easy at the moment because we are railing on the capacity of uh, uh, the providers of uh, the Wi-Fi or the satellites, but has been performed uh, effectively. The findings, having uh, this opportunity, now we do know where the findings exactly are. We have a localization of the findings. Building a 3D model, this is the third part, a digital twin on the post-processing, even uh, when we are carrying the inspection, we don't know exactly in which, let's say, frame we have a finding, either in a cargo hold or in a ballast tank. The next challenge, it is the application of the artificial technology in order to support the surveyors and the post-processing of uh, the inspections. It's difficult, we need a lot of data. Uh, all the entities that are involved in this uh, process gather data and use tools at this moment in order to have an effective uh, artificial intelligence means to identify either corrosion or bulking, everything. And uh, in this way, both the surveyors and uh, ship owners and uh, the uh, post-processing process will be much easier. The end goal, uh, it is, it's a long run challenge, but uh, already has been done some uh, uh, trials. Uh, it is easy, uh, it will be easy in um, I would say five years, to have a drone with just push a button from a deck, flying a predefined uh, route, uh, or using machine learning tools in order to uh, update it, uh, the, to, to update its, its uh, flying inside a confined space. In this regard, uh, the job of everyone will be much easier. So, um, and, uh, Closing uh, this uh, presentation, I would like to just to have, uh, we are on time, thanks God. Okay, how a pilot at the moment can perform a 
an inspection in a confined space. So imagine that if we have not a competent pilot like this one, just the drone with push the button and do all the job. So it goes down 10 meters, if I'm not mistaken. It's courtesy of a ship owner of a uh, uh, recent inspection that has, has been held with a lot of information. This is just a sample, of course, one or one and a half minutes. Uh, the survey lasts for the whole tanks uh, 10 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. And the outcome was that having the camera and the LiDAR, then we, uh, the, the surveyor can uh, develop a 3D model of all this area. And at the same time, if we find something, let's say something like, like here, a number or a finding, then this is geotagged on uh, a tool that can be used as a library, as a, a post-assessment process, and of course, to have a recording of uh, the condition of uh, our vessel. This is a manual flight, of course. Hope that in five years or less, we have uh, an autonomous flight like this. Trials have performed. If I'm not mistaken, now it returns back. Yeah. It's not bad, but it needs some, some training to do something like this. It's not like a, a, phot a photograph. Nobody cares because the, the drone itself is self-protected with this cage with a uh, resistant proof uh, specification. Now it then backs to, to the surveyor and the pilot. So the drone always follows the time. I'm on time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation.